Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 12 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to learn Fusion 360 or you're going to die trying. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping me out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. Also, I appreciate you guys who are taking this class who will use my affiliate links down in the description to buy your filament. Link over to Amazon. Get your filament here. Get your filament there. Okay, enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you, the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 11. And what that homework assignment was, was to design this most excellent set of nuts and bolts, a nut and a bolt with a knurled, with a knurled uh, 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 body on it. So if you were going to do something with finger tightening, it would kind of help you get a good grip on it. So let's hear now, how many of you guys were successful in doing this? If you were successful, leave a comment down below. I am legend. If you are not successful, leave the comment. I fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. And more recently, I've been giving you a third option, which is I never even entered the arena. And that's probably the, that's the probably the worst, uh, the, the worst answer there. I love it. If you swing and hit a home run, I'm okay. If you swing and you strike out, but the guy who never gets up to the bat gets up to bat. That's the guy that's never going to go anywhere. So appreciate it when you guys try and give it your best effort. So I know that to do this, you had to kind of explore Fusion 360 and do things that uh, I haven't shown before, but you might be able to figure, <laughs> figure it out if you look at some of the options and see which option in your create menu looks the most like what we are doing here. I will say if you hear a little humming and a little clicking in the background, as I am teaching this, I am going ahead and I am printing out my solution to the homework assignment. So we'll check in and check in on the print as we're going through here and I'm showing you how to do this. But enough of this introductory talk, too much talk, not enough designing going on. And so let's come back over here and let me come up here and I'm going to create a new design. Okay, with that new design, I'm going to start by coming here and I am going to create, I'm going to create a new sketch. We sketch in the red green plane. That is the XY plane, which is right here. Click on that and we have a dandy new sketch just waiting to be designed. We'll start with a circle. I'm going to come here. I'm going to hover over the origin until it sort of snaps there. I'm going to click, release, and then drag. And then I am going to make this 25, 25 millimeters, enter, boom, fully constrained. I like to open up the view of the sketch over here. I can see the little lock is telling me that it is fully constrained. I'm going to make another circle. I'm going to hover over the option, uh, origin, click, release, come out, and I'm going to type in 15, enter, boom. Look at that. And let's see if I click off. Yes, it is fully constrained. I like to get my dimensions out of the body where they show up a little better. They don't hurt anything in there, but I just like to keep my designs a little bit cleaner. I'm going to go ahead and make a construction line. I'm going to hover over the origin. I'm going to click. I am going to come out. Let's say that we come out 30 and then enter. And then I want to say I want to select this and I want it to be, tell it to be a construction line. I should have set that on construction before I did what I just did. Okay, so I'm going to come here, hover over this construction point, click, come out, type in 25, and uh, that looks good. And I'm going to move this out of the way as well. Come in, get a circle, hover over the origin, and then click, 
draw out. Let's make that 15. So the first sketch was the nut, and this sketch is uh, the first sketch is the bolt, and this will be the nut. We are fully constrained, so we can finish this sketch. Okay, you should be pretty good at this from our earlier lessons, but I'm going to start by making the bolt. I will click on this. I will extrude. I will extrude how far? 35 is going to be a pretty good bolt. bolt. And it turns my sketch off. I will fight with it and come back over here and turn the sketch back on. This one we are going to click and we are going to extrude that. What was that? 15 that we did on that one? Yeah, I think that's 15 will look good. And now I'm going to come over here, extrude. But what I always like to do is I like to come over here instead of saying go to distance, I'm going to say extrude to an object. In which object? I want this face over here. I want this top face. And then boom, what does that mean if I edit the bolt? It, the nut is going to follow, so they're always going to be the same height. So that's just kind of how I like to do things. So I'm going to say OK. And that is looking really good. Let's go ahead really quick and put the threads on. I come here, I click this, I come up and I say add a thread. And then what you remember that we want to do is we want to make sure that we say to model the thread an ISO at 15. We know that that's good. That will be good. And then I click on the inside of the nut. I come in and I say create a create a thread and then I will say modeled like that and then OK. Now as I've explained in the last few lessons, if you printed it just like this, it would be too tight. So I need to offset the bolt just a little bit to make sure that it will fit together quite smoothly. So I want to get a nice horizontal view here. And what I need to do is I need to say I want to modify <clears throat> and how I want to modify it, I want to offset the face. Now I have to select four faces, the top of the thread, then I hold shift down and I select the outside of the thread, and then I hold shift down and I select the underside of the thread, and then I sh click shift and I select that other part right there. So I have the entire thread done. And how far do I want to extrude it? Well, I want to extrude it in, and since out, since it's pointing out is positive, in would be negative, and I say 0.1. For my printer, 0.1 is perfect. You see how it just pulled the whole thing in? And so now this should be a nice and perfectly, a perfectly fitting nut and bolt. Okay? Now, what was the assignment? The assignment was to put that neural on it, to put that neural on it. Well, if we look over here <clears throat> under modify, there is nothing that really looks like a neural. There's no way to modify it like a neural. And to kind of think what you would want to do, let's go back and look at what I had assigned you to do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and just look at it straight on. And can you see that there's a pattern? The thing is kind of spiraling up and around. And so it's something that is coming up. It is something that is doing something like this. And so there wasn't anything under modify that did that. But if we look over here and we say create, you could think a thread, but no, that's not going to really work as a thread. The thread generally does have that pattern. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at the coil. And you think that coil doesn't look anything at all like what you're trying to do, but it has the right kind of pattern, the right path, all right? And it has, if you select it, it has, where is, oh, okay. It has options, okay? It has options that we are going to be able to set. But I'm over here on my finished one. What am I doing? I need to come over here and do it here, right? That was redesigning the one that's already been designed, but that's okay. We'll come here and we want to what? We want to create a coil. All right. Now, the first thing that it seems to be asking me to do is select a plane or a planar face. Well, what is it that we want to co coil around this bottom face here? That's what we want to start there and kind of coil up. So that's what we want to do there. Now, what is the center point? You've got to have a center that you're coiling around. That would be the origin. So I hover over it, let it snap and select it. Okay. 
Now it wants a diameter. Well, we would come out here, right? No, we would go what? To the diameter of our bolt, which was 25, and then click enter. And now look at that. I did get a spiral. Doesn't look like what I wanted, but I did get a spiral. So let's go in and let's look at this. So the profile was a plane. We selected that. We want it to road. We want as it goes around to gain height. So that looks good. And then the diameter is 25. We set that. How many revolutions do we want? Well, I really want one. Okay, I want one. And in fact, I don't think I want one. I think I want half because I don't want it to go all the way around. I just want it to go halfway around. All right, so even if we just came in and looked at that, you see we're sort of, we're, we're sort of getting some knurling action there, right? It's sort of starting to put a knurl there, but that's probably not exactly what we want to do. So I am going to make sure you can see what I'm doing here. I wonder how many times in these lessons I've shown you my timeline and it has been hidden behind the old www.toptechboy.com banner and I apologize if that's been happening but if you look down here do you see this is the coil step that I just did I can point at it I can right mouse click and I say edit the feature and then I can come back here yeah I want 0.5 that looks good I want it to be a cut right because I don't want to add that neural I just want to cut a slice into it you can see this is much too ginormous, and so I'm going to take that down to like a one, uh, a one millimeter cut. That actually looks kind of kind of slick, doesn't it? That's looking pretty good. And then what I want is I want it though to not be circular. I want it to be an internal triangle because I want it to kind of be coming in and cutting in. And then I don't want it on center. I want it on the inside. Okay, so do you see how I'm just cutting a channel there? And I say cut, and look at that. I think that is pretty good. Diameter, uh, height, this height we need to actually set here because we don't want it to keep going past the top of the body. And so I, if I remember right, we extruded that. Do you guys remember what we extruded that to? I usually have a diagram here. I think we extruded it to 30, or we extruded it to... Uh, 15 I believe let's try that 15 and let's see how that looks okay I think that looks good so now let's look at this thing and that just makes it go from here to here that's the 15 that I am talking about so let's bring this thing down I'm gonna come up to my little uh, my little uh, uh, orientation cube and look at that I think that is pretty slick and do you see it went halfway around it starts here and then it goes to there and so that really does look like it went halfway around I think that is looking pretty good so let's get this back over here I'll spin this around a little bit but if you think of that neural let's go back and look at this if you look at that neural it's kinda got a cut going this way but it also has a cut going this way. So one way we could do it is we could come in and if I can find my fusion again, we could, we could go this way and then we could come back the other way. And so we could, uh, we could just make another one of these and see if we could spin it the other way. I don't know, is there like a right hand, left hand uh, feature on that revolution? Uh, inside one mil uh, actually it doesn't seem like it gives you the option of a direction of like right-handed or left-handed so really the way I was going to do it is the way that you need to do it and so what I want to do is I want to select this cut that we've just done so I'm going to select this face and I'm going to select this face select both faces of the cut okay and now I'm going to try to get more of a home view there and now what do I want to do I want to create a mirror I want a mirror because instead of going right-handed I want it to go left-handed so I'm gonna create a mirror and then I am going to get some options it says the face uh, what do you want a mirror well I want faces I've already selected two of them 
and now I have to select the mirror plane. Like, what do I want to mirror around? Well, I want to mirror around the XZ plane, and that way it'll just flip it over that plane. But I am afraid, yeah, I think I might be able to select that. Sometimes you got to turn the body off if you can't get what you want, but I think I can select that. So I'll say, do it there, and then I'm going to say, okay. And then boom, look at that. Okay, do you see now I have one going up this way, one going up that way. Now what I need you to do is do what I just did, but it do it another 16 times all the way around, okay? And then you will have perfectly this neural. Now you could do it that way, or who is your friend? And this tool you have already learned, who is your friend? Your friend is to create a pattern and we're going to want a circular pattern circular pattern so what do we want to step around the outside of that uh, bolt we want to select this and i'm holding down shift this and now i hold down shift again this and this Okay, now what axis do we want to go around? Well, we want to spin it around that center axis, that axis that is at the center, okay, the center of this bolt. This is actually the Y axis. Now, I don't know if I can select it through the body, but I'll see if I can. Oh, okay, I could. If you can't, do the body. So that's starting to look like a neural. What's wrong? There's not enough of them. Let's see if we put eight, what it would look like. That's still not enough. What if we put 16? Oh, that's starting to look interesting. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And let's see what that looks like. This takes a lot of computation. Shazam, there it is. Did, could you guys imagine that it was gonna be this easy? Let's go in and edit it. You know, I like this because you can see the top of the neural is a little bit blunt so it's not like a pin cushion it's not very sharp edges on those neurals but we could come in and we could edit this i could come down here and i could say edit the circular pattern and what if i went up to 32 like that and then said okay this is going to take a few seconds for it to do the computation to do this model because that is a lot of uh, points in order to do this and so I just want to sort of see what it looks like if we did 32 instead of 16. Have a sip of coffee while we're, we're waiting on this. Okay so you see this is a beautiful neural but if you look at it now it comes to a point it comes to a very sharp point and I think that would dig into the old thumb a little bit and so I think I'm going to go back and just leave it at the uh, leave it at the 16. Okay, I think that looks really good. Now we got to come over and do this one, but we got to think. Remember what it asked us? It asked us for an axis of rotation, and we were convenient because the bolt was over the origin, so the Y axis you could use, because if you cut around the Y axis, you would cut up, uh, up this uh, bolt body. But here I don't have an axis, so what do I need to do? I need to create a construction aid. And I think the easiest way to do it is to make an axis through a cylinder. All right, so if I select that, it says what face, and I think what I could do is I, I think I can say this face, okay, boom, there is my axis, and now I can design around that axis. I'll come over here, and we're gonna do the same thing that we just did. And so I will come in and I will say create a coil and then it says, uh, if I just let it sit, what is the planar face? Well, I want this planar face. And then what is the center point? Hover over this construction point that I put there, pull out. And again, it's gonna be 25 and then enter. That looks good. Now we're gonna come in. The diameter is 25, good. The revolutions we wanted at 0.5 of a revolution. The height that we wanna to go to is uh, 15, like that. And then we said that about a one millimeter channel is about right. We don't want a circular, we want a triangular internal. And then we don't want it on center, we want it on the inside. And now we are making that 
full cut there. That looks good and I think I can click OK. And now I think the only little bit of a challenge is it's it's uh, kind of hidden, uh, hidden in there a little bit, but I think we'll be okay. So now we are going to take this. I'm going to zoom in. We're going to take this feature. Now I hold shift and I get that feature. And what did we do? We mirrored it. We mirrored it. And then we selected the two faces. Now it wants a mirror plane. Uh, a mirror plane. I think, uh, okay, I think what I can do is, yeah, it's going to work. I will mirror around the same one that I did last time. And that plane goes through this cylinder as well. And so that is a rather unexpected result. And so we are not going to do that one. I think I better turn that body off. And that is probably body one. And I'm going to say, no, do this one. Select the mirror plane. Oh, get rid of that other mirror plane. So I had to click off that other mirror plane and I say do this one. That is not right because this one started at a different point. This one, it started at a different point. And so I think I am a little bit, no, that, that looks right. That is going to be right. So I think if I click OK now, yeah, that looks good. It's just that threw me off a little bit for a second, but it is going to work out. Now what do I do? I select my four planes. One, hold the shift down two, hold the shift down three. And now i got to get it where I can see it a little bit. I think I can see that shift in four. I've got it. Now what do I do? I create a pattern and the pattern is circular. And then I've got four selected. The axis, we thought ahead. We thought ahead, so we have an axis there. So I click that. And if you don't see the axis, that would be under construction. Okay, if you look under construction, you will see that is that axis that I created there. And you see if I, uh, uh, it, it, I think it has it highlighted because I just selected it. And then how many do I want of those? I want 16, so I click OK. take a sip of coffee and boom. We'll turn the other body back on by clicking on the eye. And then we're gonna to go to the home view and boom, that is really, really slick. And we did that pretty quickly. And so guys, as I'm teaching you this, I don't wanna just go in and teach you a tool. I wanna to teach you something meaningful that we're building that will require you to use the tool and so what did we learn today? We learned a couple of things. We learned, again, we reviewed about threads. We learned about coil. And what you learned today is coils are more than just circular round objects. Coils can be uh, different shapes and you can use a coil not just to build something, but to cut something. And so the coil actually can be quite useful. And then we got some good, some good, uh, review of the mirror function or I'm not sure if we've done the mirror function before but we got a we got a good review of the of the circular pattern and I'm pretty sure that we had done the circular pattern before well, let's come over and see how things are going on the river cam things are looking pretty quiet out there we're sort of in the middle of the day here the fishermen have probably parked their boats for uh, for lunch right now so they're not they're not out there towards the end of the day they'll go back and start gathering uh, gathering their nets up and let's come over here and let's look at how our print is doing and you can see <clears throat> that it looks like the base is about halfway done and so what I will do is I'll come back in a little while I'll come back in a little while and we will check on this and then I'll talk to you a little bit more about what we are going to do in the future and we're back and our print is almost done let's hop on over there and look at it and I really like what I am seeing up here We've got a very nice knurl. It looks like that we have developed on these threads. And 
It says we're 98% finished, and so we are getting very, very close. And then what we'll do is we'll take a look for fit and kind of feel, see if we get the, the feel we were looking for, the fit we were looking for, and uh, basically see if there's any tweaks that, or modifications we want to do to this design. And you guys give me feedback. Are you happy with the direction these classes are going? I'm trying to hit that balance between taking you advancing your skills in design. I hope that you feel like you could sit down and design any type of nut and bolt that you might need in a project and that you would be confident in using the tools that I've shown you how to use that you aren't just simply sitting there and copying what I'm doing but you could start from scratch and you could do it on your own and that's really what I'm uh, what I'm shooting for here and, and you know give me feedback if I'm going the direct, right direction in these lessons so that it's useful to you. We will pretty soon be getting back to doing some upgrades to the printer and again as I lead you through upgrading your printer I'm going to start with the absolute lowest cost uh, upgrades that you can do that will give you the maximum bang for your buck. And a lot of times we struggle with the bed flatness and the adhesion of our bed. So the first thing we want to do is just run out and buy the auto leveler. That is one of the more expensive upgrades and really you need to get your printer aligned. That's more important than trying to compensate for a wonky misaligned printer by going in and getting one of the auto bed levelers. We will eventually do that, but that's really when you have everything tweaked in. It is the icing on the cake and it looks like we are done. How do we knock things off? We use our trusty iPhone 13 and come in here and see if we can knock it off and knock it off in there. I am really liking the looks of these knurls. Let's see, I've got a little bit of extra stuff there on the, uh, on, on the inside. I think I printed this at standard and because I printed it at standard, I've ended up with a little junk, a standard quality. I've ended up with a little junk in there that I will need to clean out. Let's see if I can clean this out a little bit with this uh, trusty tool that came uh, with our printer. Maybe I can cut out a little of that uh, extraneous filament that ended up in there. Basically, once you can get it on there the first time, then it will go very smoothly. Uh, perhaps this should have been more, instead of standard quality, maybe the medium quality would have worked a little bit better, but let's see. I will have to do a little work to clean that up. I wanted to print this quickly so I didn't do uh, the, higher, the higher quality on it. And I still got some filament in there. Actually, the threads look very good but I will have to spend a little time cleaning that out. If you look at the bolt, I just got excellent focus, you aggravating thing. It doesn't want to focus there. Let's see if I can help it. Just does not want to focus up close, but it really does look uh, very nice. Now, when I look at this, the one thing that I think about these knurls, maybe I can show it to you here a little better. Those knurls are a little bit sharper, like as I just feel them, they're coming to a little bit of a, of a sharp point. And I'm not really, at this print resolution that I'm using, I'm really not experiencing, uh, I'm really not experiencing these little flat points that you see here that I had hoped for. So I think even though I'll reprint this at a higher quality, let's see if I've got Cura uh, up here. You see that I'd, I'd sliced it at the standard quality and the earlier ones I was doing at dynamic quality prints a little bit slower, but I was getting a lot cleaner inside threads on the, uh, on the nut. But I think what I would do to reprint this, uh, instead of doing 13, I'm going to come down here. Let's see, you're not, you're not seeing what I'm seeing here. So let me come over here. These little flat spots <clears throat> that are shown in the design, I'm not seeing those little flat spots very uh, finely defined here. And like I say, I'm getting a little sharp, more like sharp points there. So I think even if I'm going to reprint this at a, uh, at a higher resolution, I want to come here. And what I would do is I would edit the circular pattern. And instead of 16, let's look and see what it looks like with 8. Uh, okay, that looks kind of interesting. 
I'm going to edit it and let's see if I did 10. I like the way the 10 looks. Also, I did another circular pattern here. And so what I would do is I would edit that circular pattern and I would put it at 10. What happened to my what happened to my circular pattern over there? there it is okay I think that that looks a little bit large on the neurals but just getting what I'm observing here I think that would probably be the sweet spot so we have learned quite a bit of interesting stuff folks so far you've learned how to sketch properly properly dimension and pro properly constrain your sketches you've learned how to do nuts bolts You've learned how to cut something using a revolve, and now you've learned how you can cut things <clears throat> using the, uh, it's called spiral, right? The, uh, or the coil tool is something uh, that we found is useful to create a cutter. And so let me know if I'm kind of doing these lessons right so that they're useful to you. Give me feedback because I really want you to develop design skills and not just see me go through the menus here. I want to go through and teach you the different uh, items in the menu, but I want to do it in the context of neat things that you can already be incorporating into your project. Okay, like I say, I think next week, if at all possible, I'd really like to go in and start showing you how to do gears because nuts, bolts, and gears, you're getting a pretty full, full tool set when you can do that. And then another thing very important is we're going to be trying to learn more and more of these construction uh, helpers, construction planes, axes, and points. And that allows you, as you start getting more three-dimensional complexity in your designs, to have additional planes, uh, axes, and points that you can design too. And that allows us to uh, begin to, to increase the complexity of the, uh, the three-dimensional complexity of the things that we are designing. Okay, guys, I hope you are having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. If you enjoyed the lesson, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Also, leave a comment down below. Both of those things will help us with the old YouTube juice. And the more YouTube juice I have, the more people will be exposed to these lessons. And that's important because the world needs more people designing, building, coding, doing engineering, and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.